The first reading is taken from Lamentations 5, 1 to 11. Lamentations 5, 1 to 11. Remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become fatherless, our mothers are widows. We must buy the water we drink, a wood can be had only at a price. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary, weary and find no rest. We are submitted to Egypt and Arasia to get enough bread. Our ancestors sinned and are no more and we bear their punishment. Slaves rule over us and there is no one to free us from their hands. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the desert. Our skin is as hot as the oven, feverish from hunger. Women have been violated in Zion and virgins in the towns of Judah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lamentations chapter 5 verses 12 to 22. Our princes are being hanged by their thumbs and our elders are treated with contempt. Young men are led away to work at millstones and boys stagger under heavy loads of wood. The elders no longer sit in the city gates. The young men no longer dance and sing. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The garlands have fallen from our heads. Weep for us because we have sinned. Our hearts are sick and weary and our eyes grow dim with tears. For Jerusalem is empty and desolate, a place haunted by jackals. But Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Heavenly Father, be with me as I speak. Be with all those who are listening at home. And Father, touch our hearts and minds with just what each one of us needs to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are still in the book of Lamentations. So we're in the beginning of Advent and it's kind of appropriate really in this time of watching and waiting uh, that we have in Advent that we are still in this space of lament uh, and sorrow. But within it, uh, there is much to learn, I think, about um, hope. And so that's my kind of theme for today, hope for the hopeless. And later on, I'm going to talk about uh, those three words, restore, return and renew. Um, but to begin with, where we find ourselves in the story is pretty terrible. So just a, a warning about some images and, and subject matter that might be uh, triggering or upsetting for some people. Um, it is difficult subject matter. Um, there's a kind of clue in the name, Lamentations, as we've been hearing over the past uh, weeks. And uh, the whole of the book begins with look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. And sadly, uh, where we find the people of Judah right now in this story is in a pretty terrible place. They were... Um, People survived the Babylonian siege, but then found themselves caught uh, between the Egyptians and the Assyrians. Um, um, and these really 
difficult words. They feel disgraced. They feel they've lost their inheritance. Everything's gone to strangers and foreigners. They feel orphans. They feel like they're fatherless and mothers are like widows. They have to buy even the most basic commodities and water and, and firewood. They're exhausted and brought low. And uh, even their princes hung up by their hands. Uh, just, you know, the young and the old, everything is terrible. And there's this feeling in all that, that they've been forsaken by God and that kind of cry from the heart, why do you forsake us for so long? There are times when all of us feel, where is God? And this pandemic might be one of those for some of you. You might be feeling, and there is a sense of how long, oh Lord, how long? in this whole situation as well um, and there are many other reasons why people might feel grief or despair or hopelessness and and sometimes all we can do is cry out in pain and sorrow lord have mercy that feeling joy is gone from our hearts our dancing has turned to mourning it's hard to imagine though when you feel like that how you could feel joy again so that's the place that we're in with these folks uh, in this story right now. And there's also the rather sort of the slightly unhealthy thing, I think, that we can sometimes get into when we are in these situations of kind of, a, if you like, a blame culture, a feeling like it must be somebody else's fault. And they're saying, here, our ancestors have sinned. Oh, it's their fault. They've died. We're suffering the punishment that they deserved. And that's not such a healthy place to be in either. So, but a turning point thankfully comes in this story where although the people are, are grief stricken and are in this terrible place, they suddenly kind of have this realization, we have sinned. So we're not blaming it all on our ancestors or somebody else anymore. We're realizing that we have sinned. And this is a very important uh, turning point and something for all of us to um, you know it's easy to get into that kind of everything is somebody else's fault and we need to take responsibility for our own actions and we also always as Christians need to examine ourselves and come before God and say where am I falling short what am I doing wrong things to happen to these folks in this story as well that they begin to realize that actually some of this is to do with their own sin and then they turn to worship and that's something we were reminded of last week weren't we that god is good all the time all the time god is good he is who he says he is he is still there he is still in the heavens and so to turn to worship even when we don't feel like it even when we're in a terrible place is really important and here we see it here you lord are enthroned forever your throne endures from generation to generation honoring god for who he is a very important part of what we need to do even when we feel despair you O lord reign forever your throne endures to all generations and then towards the end of the reading we get these words restore return renew Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old. And then in the last verse, there's a kind of a doubt in again, you know, unless you're so angry with us that you'll never forget. But I think we know, we know the end of that story. We know in the light of Jesus that, that there is nothing that we can do to take ourselves completely away uh, from the love of God, that he will always be wanting to reach out to us the we can only cut ourselves off by denying him but if we do turn to him he will always hold out that hand and that's the really important message that i want to leave us with that these words restore return renew so here is the good news here is the hope for the hopeless that god's mercy is bigger than any of our mistakes any of your mistakes any of mine any of ours and he was bigger than the mistakes of the people of Israel and we see that when we see the big picture when we see the whole story we know that God's mercy was and is given to us endlessly 
Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old. So I want us to, to think about Jesus as the kind of ultimate restorer, repairer and renewer. So one of my favourite programmes is The Repair Shop, as I'm sure lots of people know. And these are very lovely people, very wonderful craftsmen, and they show such love not only to the thing that they're repairing and restoring and renewing, but to the story of the object and the people that bring the things to be repaired. And I was thinking of Jesus as, you know, a craftsman in his human life and being the ultimate restorer repair. And one of the things, if you ever watch the show, you'll see is that they, they, they'll fix the thing, but they, it doesn't lose its identity. It's still, it's, it is renewed and repaired and restored, but in the way that it still has the kind of, the essence of it and sometimes the signs of of the journey it's been through and its kind of brokenness in it and it made me think of how that was a really good kind of metaphor for for um us and for christ and for what he does for us and and for the fact that um and until the time when he comes again he still has he still has the the holes in his hands from the nails of the cross even though he is uh, in the heavens and he is interceding for us and I, I wanted us to just focus on that wonderful hope that he is our ultimate restorer, repairer and renewer and what good news that is that we have to give people in these times and if we're feeling um, hopeless or we know somebody else that is uh, because the love of God shown through to for us through his son jesus is the hope of salvation for us and for the world and we learn from jeremiah and lamentations that our faith must not fail even and especially when times are hard and how much more is this true because of jesus and uh, that picture of me think of of peter and i remembered those words uh christ's words to peter in luke 22 31 to 32 Satan demanded to have you, but I have prayed for you. Jesus intercedes for us in the heavenlies. He is praying for us that, our, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, and note that Jesus doesn't say if you turn again, when you turn again, strengthen your brothers. So I wanted to remind us, even if we're feeling or those people in that story in a place of, of despair, we need to remember to turn back to Christ and then when we feel stronger and we feel restored then turn and strengthen others because God's grace brings us back from the brink it lifts us out of the pit it saves us and we have a duty to save others so what will you do to restore return and renew hope today to bring hope to the hopeless this is the great hope we have to offer uh, Christ in people's lives. It's my hope, your hope, the only hope there is. So let's do something about it today.